Welcome back to episode six of Real Rivals, the second episode of 2024. And it is the first episode that we're gonna be using a Prime Legend card. Now I've mentioned it in previous episodes. Today is the day you see a Prime Legend versus a current legend. Now, we are talking about the best fighter, arguably, let's say arguably, the best fighter of today versus arguably one of the best fighters of all time. He calls himself TBE, the best ever. It was only right that we do Floyd, Money Mayweather versus Terence Bud Crawford. Let's get into the tail of the tape. Floyd is obviously 46 now. We're gonna be judging his stats from his prime, but this is just now. Terence Crawford, 36. Floyd, 5'8". Terence 5'8", reach 72 inch for Floyd, 74 inch for Terence. Record 50 and 0 with 27 knockouts for Floyd Mayweather Jr. Terence Crawford 40 and 0 with 31 knockouts. Floyd is the former WBC super featherweight champion, lightweight champion, super lightweight champion, welterweight champion, super welterweight champion. Bud, the former lightweight champion, undisputed super lightweight champion, the current undisputed welterweight champion. What, so I'm you, we're talking greatness today, we're talking greatness. If you haven't seen the episode before, go back and check the previous ones. We are looking for attack, speed, durability, power, defense, and IQ. So when I look at each of the clips, that's what we're gonna be judging. Me and Rums had a conversation before this video started and there's a stat here, I'll go through briefly and explain why, but both of these men, IQ sits at 10. If you beef me with that one, that might be one that I take first. Now, we'll head into Terence Crawford's clips and watch his attack. So this is Crawford counter punching Victor Postel. So we know Bud, brilliant shot. He can box Orthodox and he can box Southpaw. So you see Postel's trying to walk him down here. He plants the back foot and counters. And he follows the line of attack immediately, which triggers the knockdown. So you can see here in the replay, he catches and he shoots. He predicted him to throw the backhand since he was moving that way and encountered with a very accurate shot, causing Postel to, to you know, shake the legs. Boom. Let's see Bud Crawford attacking Sean Porter. Look at where his feet are. He's pushing his feet into range right now, forcing Sean to work. Sean throws a shot and he counters. Again, with the perfect shot selection. He's standing in the southpaw stance. He uses his lead arm as the hook and whips the uppercut because Sean Porter is known to duck. Using his jab, measuring, measuring. He's looking for that same shot again. And that is a sign of good attack. Picking the correct punches and building the combination off those punches. When he dropped Sean Porter initially, he threw the hook, he threw the uppercut. On the second knockdown, knowing that those two punches caused the damage, he goes to an uppercut hook, uppercut hook again. So he's realizing the shots that work, repeats them and even Sean is pissed, hitting the ground because he's like, this guy got me again with the same combinations, but it's about how smart he is and it's about how calculated the attack is. Let's see another clip here of Crawford stopping Kell Brook. As soon as Kell Brook advances, short check hook hits him on the button, stumbles him into the ropes, and you can see Bud follows the line to attack again. The referee has to pull him off and start a count even though Kell didn't fall on the floor. The rule in boxing is if the referee believes the ropes kept you up, they can count it as a knockdown. So you can see after hurting his opponent, he knows he can smell blood. He pours with a jab, measuring, measuring, checking the levels, checking the levels, ducks, swings high, comes over on the outside, accurate punches, and the referee calls a halt to the fight in the fourth round. So we've seen different elements to Terence Crawford's attack. We've seen the placement of his feet. We've seen his shot selection. We've seen him turn defense into offense. And the, and the thing is, is as well with Bud, which I think really should add to his, his rating is that he's knocked people out from both stances, from a southpaw stance or an orthodox stance. He literally changes it based on the opponent. I'm gonna give Bud Crawford an attack rating of nine. The reason why I give him an attack rate rating of nine is because I've seen when he is in that aggressive state sometimes that he can get caught and then he can get paid for it. And I've broken down the sections as to as to why 
he, he deserves to get those points. Speed, right, so Crawford's obviously gonna be quicker in his lighter days compared to his, and his younger days compared to his now. Lightning speed, let's see every time he drops Errol Spence. See? So Errol left his feet behind there and Crawford was quick to see the shot and follow up with the counter punches to drop Errol Spence. This was a brilliant performance. People have taken so much away from Crawford because of how easy he made this look. Not lightning, quick, you've heard me say this before, but also not slow either. And I think there's an advantage to not being super fast because you can miss opportunities trying to be super fast. I think the best fighters don't focus on being super fast. They're focused on being fast enough to get the job done. I wanna see another clip, Crawford and Uriokas Gamboa, which was a difficult fight for him and was maybe like one of his career defining fights. He switched south for hit him with a quick check hook, took the legs away from Gamboa. See him here defending his shots, switch his south for, opens up the angle, makes him pay again. Again, not the quickest feet, but uses them when he needs to. Every time you see him, got, he got someone hurt, them feet get, they speed up. He's on the hunt, right? I'm gonna give him a rating of seven. That could be an eight, but I'm going with a seven. Cause you look at someone like Boots Ennis, Boots Ennis is quicker, but he's also a younger man. These things make a difference. Durability, Crawford hasn't been in danger too many times in his career. He's been the distance a few times. He's been in there with high level opponents. But this is the only time Terence Crawford got knocked down in his career. It wasn't counted as a knockdown. But to my eye, even when I watched it on the day, I thought, why didn't they count? So you can see there, he stepped forward with the overhand and he did, he held on, he held on to him as soon as the shot landed. But he did drop. I, I feel like I would have counted it as a knockdown. You see here, he catches him off guard because he, he, he throws forward whilst he was in the southpaw stance. And obviously you feel like the right hand is so much further away from you being in the southpaw stance. Now the right hand's all the way back here. If that person decides to throw that hand and step forward into it, it cuts all the distance. And that is what happened here when Crawford got hit with the overhand right. Straight on the chin, bam. And he got hit with a little hook as well. And his knee touched the ground. They ruled it a slip, but you see it here on the replay. Let me know in the comments as well if you think this should count as a knockdown or if he held on in time and it got messy enough that you, you would have allowed it. But looking at it here, boom! Hit him on his button. And then he hit him with a little hook behind his ear. I think Crawford feels it, holds on to him. And next thing you know, he ends up on the knee, like in the screenshot that we have here. Interesting. He got up and he went on to stop my man. Let's just add that to the story. Again, when you get to these level, these levels and you're talking about fighters of, of this stature, there's no way that they could not be durable. He stopped people early, stopped people late, he stopped people mid. I think it's only right that we give Bud Crawford the durability of 10. Power. So far, all we've seen is clips of him sending people to the canvas. Some people got flatlined, some people didn't, but clearly Terence has power. And he stopped people that I don't normally get stopped. Like Sean Porter, for example. This is a man that is hard to stop. I don't think anyone's ever stopped him. I think Crawford is the, yeah, he is. Crawford is the only man to stop him. And he's, and he's up there with the most durable guys of this era as well. And been in there with the best, been in there with punches. And Terence managed to stop him. He stopped people at lightweight. He stopped people at light welterweight. He stopped people at welterweight. He's shown his power travels with him through the weight categories that he's competed at. So there's no way we're gonna give him a low power rating. Kel Brook, he took the front foot shows he could stop someone. Sean Porter, he took the front foot, showed he can stop someone. Errol, he dropped Errol coming, when Errol was coming at him. He went to Errol as well, but he's not known for his punch power. Some people are known for their punch power. Like, he's a devastating puncher. I wouldn't put Bud Crawford down as a devastating puncher, but I would say that his punch selection slash accuracy is second to none, which leads him to stop people. I'm gonna give him a power rating 
of eight. We've already done the IQ for both men. Let's remember this. So there's only one more stat to fill out for Bud Crawford, which is his defense. Now, I've seen Crawford take some punches. Of course, we've all seen some fighters take some punches. I've seen him get a bit eager sometimes and forget about his defenses. But when he's not in that mood, his defense is impeccable. Against Errol Spence Jr., the first knockdown came from defense. Catching the shot, returning the shot. Against Avenesian, turning the shoulder, throwing the shot. He converts defense into offense whenever he can. We're gonna go back to his clip against Sanabria. You can see him here with the quick head movement as he's exiting the clinch. He leans back quickly, he's alert, he's aware. Ducks, slips out the way, slips out the way, switches stance, gets back to the center of the ring, which is the most advantageous position in boxing. And when I watch Bud Crawford, one of my favorite fighters of today for sure, I always like to take in his defense and how aware he is of, of what is coming at him. But he does have their moments. Everyone's had their moments though. But I would say this, Crawford, I think is defensively better as a southpaw than as an orthodox, from what I've seen. This is someone that I do watch. My final score for Bud Crawford's defense is a nine, okay? I'm a chill with the tens. This completes Terence Crawford's card. Now we're gonna move on to some clips of Pretty Boy, Floyd, and Money Mayweather. Two different stages of his career, but dominated the whole time. The first thing we're judging is attack of prime Floyd Mayweather. Let's see him batter and bully Arturo Gatti. This is, I think, one of his career best performances, by the way. So you see Floyd held his head down a bit. Gatti looks to turn to the ref and complain. Floyd bangs him in his face because the rules are to protect yourself at all times. That is the rule, yeah? He, the referee did say break. He, Gatti weren't lying, but he looked away. Floyd said, I'm attacking. Now look at Floyd. He attacks to the body, to the head. Reads the situation. Jab to the body, punch to the head, back to the body, back to the head, back to the body. Nah, nah, nah. This is rude. What you see with the elite fighters, which is why you have to give them a high attack rating, is once the punches land that they know works, they go right back to it and they build off it. And this is what you can see. He realized the hook to the body works, so I'm gonna go back there, the hook to the body and the hook to the head works. And matter of fact, I might just do it again when I get the opportunity. But the combination, look, lead hooks. He's throwing lead hooks. Everyone knows the rule in boxing is that you should jab first. He said, I know the range. I'm gonna jump with a hook from here, watch. Then he proceeds to throw a lead right hand. So he doesn't even jab in between to check, okay, hook, let me measure you, hit you again. He just goes bump. Bap, bap again. Rude. So he throws a hook here, then he goes, you know what, I, I, I see the distance. Right hand, right hand, right hand, right hand. He lands four in a row without jabbing. So one, two, three, four. Then a hook to the head. Brilliant, brilliant attack. The variety of punches, the positioning in the ring. Let's see Floyd drop Sean Bay Mitchell with a body shot. Damn, this footage looks old, but I remember when this was fresh, but jeez. So Floyd fighting a southpaw, yeah, we don't see him against many southpaws, but you see he was shooting that right hand to the stomach because he is a southpaw. Again, showing attacking, an attacking mindset, showing good attack. Southpaws are open to the body if you're orthodox because they stand like this, and you can throw the right hand to the pit of the stomach, and he ended up stopping him in the sixth round. So you see him advance here, Wave at the top, boom! Shoots that right hand straight to the stomach, take all the air out of him. He has to take a knee and doesn't get up in time. Ah, oh, the attack against Gay, where that was 10 10 attack. Let's see him stop Ricky Hatton. And it's one of my favorite fights. You see him here. It goes from defense to attack. He's backing up, looking like, oh yeah, you can come through here, Ricky, because you know you want to roll forward. Boom! Hit man and made his head hit the turnbuckle, like wrestling. And he knows his positioning in the ring, uses the correct attack, sends Ricky into the turnbuckle from a check hook. It's like a defensive attacking move, but nevertheless, punch selection on point. Ricky's stumbling, now you see Floyd go for the kill, creating the space so he can't hold him. 
He can't hold him. He put his forearm in his neck. He ain't even playing. I don't care. Follows up with two hooks, a right hand, another hook, and then Ricky stumbles down and the fight is ended. But you can see here on the replay, just check hooks him. And he tried it so many times throughout the fight before he landed the sweet one in the 10th round. This is how you know we're working with the elites, boy. Because I don't, again, I don't see a reason not to give Floyd a 10. Bear in mind, I gave Crawford a nine and Crawford can attack from both stances. Floyd weren't really a switcher like that. Oh. It's between nine or 10 and it's between nine or 10, but I don't know. I don't know. You know what, let me give him a 10. The reason why I give Floyd the 10 over Crawford's nine is because when Crawford gets aggressive, I see him get hit more. When Floyd decides to get aggressive, the defense is still as elite as when he's in a defensive mode. I think Crawford does get caught a little bit, you know? So I'm gonna give Floyd, prime Floyd Mayweather, a 10. Speed. This guy can do everything. I'm telling you, this guy can do everything, man. Let's see his speed when he outboxes Shane Mosley. So we're looking at speed of hands. We know Floyd has lightning hands. The speed of feet, he has speed of feet. Look at him using his feet to get out of the way, using the speed of his hand to quickly lean back and counter. Some of these clips I've had to slow them down to even review it for you guys. So you can see his speed of hand there, his speed of foot, torso as well. You can't be known for doing the shoulder roll if you don't have speed of torso, but you get yourself hurt. I'll tell you that right now. This is Mayweather versus Pacquiao, and let's see how Floyd uses his speed of feet here to evade Manny Pacquiao, who's a very aggressive and quick south for himself. Manny Pacquiao's one of the quickest fighters I've ever seen. He's on the ropes there, quick right hand. Look how quickly he can shoot direction, jump direction to get back into a good position in the ring. Very quick. And then the speed of his torso to then evade the punches as well. We saw the clip against Gatti when he was putting the shots together. I had to slow it down. Let me just have it at normal speed. The man's hands is light. Everyone says it as well. Everyone that fights with this guy is so quick. Like That's the review. Like People give that. He's just so quick. He's so sharp. Do you know what I mean? He's like a cat. That's how everyone described it. Like, have you ever seen a slow cat? Have you ever seen a slow cat? Put it down in the comments. Because I think, for example, he had to use timing to beat Manny Pacquiao because Manny Pacquiao is a fighter with the speed of 10. He met someone quicker than him. If I'm gonna give Pacquiao a 10, I'm gonna give Floyd a nine. Durability. Let's see Floyd take some licks against Shane Mosley when he thought Shane Mosley was old and he couldn't do nothing to him and he got in the fight too overconfident. He got paid, boom! Straight to his jaw, he grabbed that arm. Floyd got hit so hard, before Shane Mosley could even remove his hand from finishing the shot, man clamped onto his arm. He couldn't even remove his arm to land another shot with that hand. So you see him, he defo rocks him. His legs are gone here. He's holding on as tight as he can. Mosley's unloading on him. Floyd is staying close to help smother the attack. Obviously, we know he has 10-10-10 defense, yeah? Then he bangs him behind his ear and Floyd didn't even drop. I still can't believe he didn't drop from that because he hasn't even fully recovered from the first punch he got hit with. Then he gets hit with a mad right hook. His legs dip all the way, but he still don't fall. And he still finds a way to, to stumble his legs back to the ropes where he's supported. He's throwing back as well. His guard is high and he's spoiling Mosley from continuing to attack. I, I can't believe it. I remember watching that live and I thought, how did this guy not go down? Find someone like Ricky Hatton and knocking him out in round 10. That does some good stuff for your durability as well. Because Ricky Hatton's intense. Let's see Floyd against De La Hoya. De La Hoya really pushed Floyd on this day. And you see De La Hoya whacking his body. And Floyd's just cool. Floyd's just letting him, letting him do it. And then when he finds a way to return, he does. But this was a hard fight because he went up to light middleweight, 154, and to be in a rough physical fight, obviously is a show of durability. Floyd is very durable, very fit. We've never seen him fade. He's never faded in a fight. I can't give Floyd a lower durability than 10, I'm sorry. Um, 
I can't. You can't give these guys any lower than nine or 10, man, once they get to this level, because you wouldn't be able to achieve this level with low durability. Power. Now, this is where I think this might be Floyd's lowest rating. He's 50 and all with 27 knockouts. A lot of his knockouts came earlier in his career. His last stoppage we actually have here was against Victor Ortiz. When Victor Ortiz headbutts Floyd and tries to say sorry too many times. So you see him here, boom! Some real, get me, some Vinnie Jones thing, like Roy Keane head is like Zinedine Zidane and, and Matarazzi thing. Straight there, Floyd says, yeah, say no more. He says, I'm sorry. He said, yeah, man, I heard you, bro. Blah, blah. Put my man to sleep. Try to hug me too many times. How much time you want to say sorry to me? I'm your opponent. I'm your enemy. And he doesn't make the count. And that is Floyd's last stoppage. Floyd has explained in his earlier stages of his career, he was searching for stoppages, but his hands were fragile. So as his career developed, he fought in a way that could preserve his hands. I mean, that's fair enough, but it still contributes to a, a power rating that ain't gonna be off the charts, regardless of the reason. I'll give Floyd the power rating of a seven. Similar to what I said about the speed for Crawford, he's not a power puncher, but he's a precise puncher and he puts the right punches together. Defense, let's see him make Canelo miss over and over again. So Floyd is known for his shoulder roll, right? But he wasn't always in the shoulder roll. His feet was a lot of his defense. So here there's a shot, there's a replay. You see him using his shoulder, using his torso. He's not really using his feet there. But there he was in a traditional guard, still using his defense, using his feet to get in and out of range, countering as part of his defense, using his jab, using the ropes, using the entire ring to keep his opponent at bay. Shoulder rolls again, counters off it. And then you see, he's not just standing in the shoulder roll. Anyone can just stand like this. He's not just standing in the shoulder roll. He's moving his torso whilst he's in that position to help him avoid the punches. But you can see here against Canelo, this was a def brilliant defensive showing. Even there, look, look, Canelo tries to throw to his arm. He's like, watch, as soon as you touch my arm, pew, shoots that out. Right hand straight to the jaw. Canelo couldn't believe it. Evading with the feet, the shoulders, the hands. They're making Canelo hit the rope. He even look at the rope. It's brilliant boxing. It's brilliant boxing. Brilliant defensive boxing against Canelo. Don't care if he was young or not. He's still again he, at this time. Canelo was already a world champion multiple times. A lot of people failed to add that in. Oh, Canelo was young though. Donny was already world champion, bro, multiple times. So let's not act like. He was fresh in his career and it was his first step up. It would be disrespectful of me to give Floyd anything less than a 10 for his defense. It'd be disrespectful. And that wraps up both cards on a special episode six. I went down memory lane in some of them clips where I remember being a kid thinking, I wanna do that, I wanna do that. And obviously the journey is still continuing and I will have these highlights and these clips one day man maybe someone will be doing a their version of real rivals with me cool <laughs> so bud crawford has an overall of 88 and floyd mayweather has an overall of 93 making prime floyd mayweather the winner today on episode six of real rivals let me know what you think in the comments if i was wrong if you try beef me over floyd's defense and iq and bud crawford's iq then and their durability i'm not listening anything else i can pass make sure you tune in next week we'll be right back and uh let me know what you want to see